Hi guys, this is Gopika here and I'm back with my new video. In this we'll be discussing the next set of problems from practice set 1.2. Okay, already the first five problems I covered in the last video and this video will cover the next questions. Okay, so without wasting time, let's get started. Okay, so this is question number six. So let me choose the pointer. All right, so let's read the question. Find QP using given information in the figure. Okay, there is a figure, uh, there is a triangle, and uh, they have given uh, length of few segments. And then here we have to find length of QP. Okay, so if you observe the diagram, M NQ, the ray NQ is bisector of angle M and P. Okay, so you see the symbols indicating that both the angles are equal. That means NQ is bisecting the angle N. Okay, so that is one observation. Another observation is MN is 25, PN is 40, MQ is 14 and we have to find QP. So when angle bisector is involved, we will be using the angle bisector theorem. So NQ is angle bisector of angle M and P. Why? Because M and Q is equal to Q and P. They have given in the diagram. Therefore, by angle bisector theorem, MQ upon QP is same as NM upon NP. Okay? Because the bisector divides the opposite side in same ratio as of the other two sides of the triangle. Okay? So, NM upon NP is same as QM upon QP. Now, just substituting the values, NM is 25, NP is 40, MQ is 14, and QP is that we have to find. So, now we multiply the denominators to the other sides. So that is 25 into QP is equal to 14 into 40. Alright? So, QP will be now dividing by 25 on both the sides. From here, 25 will get cancelled and here it will get divided. So, now 40 and 25 we can divide by 5. So, the numerator 8 will remain and the denominator 5 will remain. Okay? So, 14 into 8 upon 5. 14 into 8 is 112 upon 5. Now, the answer will be in decimals because we cannot perfectly divide 112 by 5 so in decimal point we will get 22.4 therefore QP is equal to 22.4 simple so just we have to observe the diagram whenever we find that angle bisector is involved then obviously are using either angle bisector theorem or converse of it okay and then rest follows all right so what is important is keep revising the statement of all those theorems that we learned that is basic proportionality theorem angle bisector theorem converse of both the theorems and then the property of parallel lines three parallel lines and transverses so just revise the statements and then all these sums or the, actually the whole practice set is very simple once you have understood the statement of those theorems okay so let's move on to question number seven all right so here as you see in the diagram there are three parallel lines and two transverses included so obviously we are going to use that property the last theorem that we learned in figure if AB is parallel to CD is parallel to FE then find X and AE okay so here we have to find X that is uh, this length of CE and then we have to find length of AE okay now by property of three parallel lines and transverses so by the property we know that when we have three parallel lines and two transverses the intercepts made by the transversal are in same proportion so FD upon DB is equal to EC upon CA so FD upon DB is equal to EC upon CA now substitute the values FD is 4 DB is 8 EC is X and CA is 12 now multiply 12 to the other side X remains in this side so X is equal to 4 by 8 into 12 all right so 4 by 8 is same as 1 by 2 if you divide by 2 uh, divide by 4 uh, numerator as well as denominator the reduced form will be 1 by 2 so X is equal to 1 by 2 into 12 now divide 12 by 2 that is 6 so x is equal to 6 so length of ce is 6 now one more thing you are supposed to find that is ae so how what will be ae ae is ac plus ce that is 12 plus x that is equal to 12 that is 18 so that part you will have to write okay 
that is simple part so that that i left for you actually that you can fill it up all right a e is just adding a c plus c e okay now let's move on to next problem okay in triangle element ray mt bisects angle lmn now if you see this ray mt is bisecting the angle m or rather angle lmn all right if lm is 6 so lm is 6 mn is 10 tn is 8 we have to find lt again here we will be using the angle bisector theorem because angle bisector is involved so somewhere we will have to use it that's the hint actually to recognize which theorem we are supposed to use just uh, observe the information given and then you can make out very easily okay so by angle bisector theorem the bisector divides the opposite side in same ratio of the other two sides of the triangle so mn upon ml is equal to tn upon tl or ml upon mn is equal to tl upon tn okay any how uh, you can write now ml upon mn is same as tl upon tn now substituting the values 6 upon 10 is equal to tl upon 8 so multiplying 8 to the other side will get tl is equal to 6 by 10 into 8 so 6 by 10 is same as 3 by 5 that is we are dividing numerator and denominator by 2 so 3 by 5 into 8 3 into 8 is 24 24 upon 5 again this is not perfectly divided so we will get something in decimal form so tl is equal to 4.8 all right simple so let's move on to the next problem okay so this is the question number 9 so let's read the question so first let me choose the point all right in triangle abc segment bd bisects angle abc okay so bd that is segment bd is bisecting abc If AB is x, BC is x plus five, AD is x minus two, and DC is x plus two, then find the value of x. Okay. So all these lengths they have given in terms of variable x, and we have to find what is this x. Okay. The value of x. So by angle bisector theorem, obviously angle bisector theorem is involved over here. So you might have noticed it uh, when we just discussed about bd being the bisector of abc you have already i know many of you already got that which theorem we are going to use in this problem so ab upon bc is equal to ad upon dc what does angle bisector theorem says that is if you have an angle bisector then it divides the opposite side in same ratio of the other two sides of the triangle so ab upon bc is equal to ad upon dc Okay. Now substitute the values. AB is x, BC is x plus y, AD is x minus two, and DC is x plus two. Now after substituting, we multiply the denominators to other side. So x into x plus two is equal to x plus y into x minus two. So this x I multiply inside the bracket. So x into x is x square, and x into two is two x. Okay. Now here what we have done. X into x minus two. Plus five into x minus two, and if you open both the things, then we end up here. Okay, if you are not clear, I will show that step. Here we go. X plus five into x minus two is equal to x into x minus two plus five into x minus two. Okay, binomial into binomial, we can split it like this, and now we got monomial into binomial and monomial into binomial. Now, how we open the brackets? Just multiply x inside the brackets, so x square minus. 2x and here we multiply 5 inside the bracket so 5x minus 5 to the 10 okay so this is what we end up okay now now i bring all this term to the other side okay so now we bring all the terms to one side so x square And uh, I arranged the rearranged the terms and wrote the like terms together. Okay, like terms. So x square minus x square plus two x. And here this is minus two x. If this comes to the other side, it will become plus two x. And plus five x will become minus five x. So x square minus x square plus two x plus two x minus five x. And here the ten is having negative sign. So when it changes the side, it will plus ten. All right. 
and is equal to zero. So only zero is left in the other side. Rest all things we brought here. So now x square minus x square will get cancelled because it will give you zero. Then two x plus two x is four x. Four x minus five x will be minus x, and minus x plus ten is equal. To, so this is left. Again ten going to the other side. Minus x is equal to minus ten. Therefore x equal to ten. Simple. So only thing is. You should be able to um, first. You should be able to recognize the theorem that you are using, and then we uh, you should be able to remember how to multiply two binomials or how to multiply a monomial and a binomial. Okay, all those things we are using, and then we are just arranging the like terms together and cancelling and whatever subtraction is required, and then we end up at that so very very easily. Okay, simple. So let's try the next problem. Okay, so this is the tenth question in your textbook, and they have uh, actually the proof they have already given. They have not given the total proof, but they have left some spaces that you have to fill. Okay, the framework is given. So let's read the question. In Figure one point four four, x is any point in the interior of the triangle. Okay, x is in the interior of the triangle. Point x is joined to vertices of triangle. It is joined to vertices of the in uh, small triangle also and the big triangle also. Uh, segment PQ is parallel to DE is given, and segment QR parallel to EF is also given. Okay, so we need to prove that the third pair, that is segment PR, is parallel to DF. Okay, the proof is actually really simple. I think we are going to use the basic proportionality theorem twice, and then by the converse of it, we will get or we will arrive at this at the end. Okay. So just we are applying it, and then everything is simple. Now in XDE, if you see this. triangle in the left side here pq is parallel to de okay so reason what is the reason pq parallel to de it is given all right simple therefore xp upon pd is equal to qe is equal to xq upon qe okay xp upon pd is equal to xq upon qe why by basic proportionality theorem simple now when you have pq is parallel to de pq is dividing xd and xc in same proportion that is xp upon pd is equal to xq upon qe okay so you have to fill this reasons and the re in the reason they have given basic proportionality theorem so in accordance with that you fill the boxes so by basic proportionality theorem what ratios match accordingly you fill it okay Now in triangle X, EF QR is parallel to EF. What is the reason? Again, that is given to you in the question itself. Okay. So again, we will apply the basic proportionality theorem over here. So if you observe, QR is parallel to EF. That means XQ upon QE is equal to XR upon RF. Okay. And the reason would be basic proportionality theorem. All right. Simple. Now, if you observe point number one and point number two, what you can see? X Q upon Q E is common to both the ratios. Yes, that means X P upon P D is equal to X R upon R F. X P upon P D is equal to X R upon R F. Okay. So we have X P upon P D is equal to X R upon R F. So let's see in the diagram. xp upon pd is equal to xr upon rf so by converse of basic proportionality theorem we have pr is parallel to segment df okay simple now there is a mistake in this um, textbook actually now they have ended up saying that Segment PR is parallel to segment DE. Now this is not E, this is F. Okay, that is what we had to prove also. Okay, DE is opposite to in the opposite side. So here we are dealing with PR and DF. So just note that they have a typing error in the textbook. It is not DE in the proof. It should be DF because that is what we have to prove also. And according to the diagram also, that is true. PR is parallel to DF. So just note this is not de this is df the reason is converse of basic proportionality theorem okay 
simple so if you don't understand the proof pause the video and once again read go through it and if you have any doubts please write in the comment section okay and please note the typing error in this textbook is not de this is df okay so let's move on to the next question all right so this is the last question in the practice set 1.2 so let's see what it is In triangle ABC, ray BD bisects angle ABC. So ray BD bisects angle ABC, and ray CE bisects angle ACB. If segment AB is congruent to segment AC, where is segment AB? Okay, AB is congruent to AC. Congruent means they are of same length. Then prove that ED is parallel to BC. Okay, you have to prove ED is parallel to BC using the fact that these two rays are. Rays are angle bisectors of the angles B and C, and the segments AB and AC are congruent. Using these three things, we will have to prove that ED is parallel to BC. Okay, so here we will be using angle bisector theorem twice. Then we will be using converse of basic proportionality theorem, and then we arrive at the answer. Okay, so let's do step by step. First, ray BD bisects angle ABC. BD by six angle ABC. Now apply angle bisector theorem. So by that AB upon BC is equal to AD upon DC. Simple. Now here I do observe that they have given segment AB is congruent to segment AC. So let's replace AB by AC. Therefore AC upon BC is equal to AD upon DC. The reason is AB is equal to AC. So this is our first point. Okay. Now similarly. Next is ray CE is angle bisector of ACB. Okay, so by angle bisector theorem, we have AC upon CB is equal to AE upon EB. Okay, AC upon BC is equal to AE upon EB. Now you observe or now you note compare one and two equations one and two. What is common? AC upon BC is common to both the equations, one as well as two. So that means the right hand side, right hand side also match. That is AD upon DC is equal to AE upon EB. So now check this ratios. What it is in the diagram? How it looks like? AE upon EB is equal to AD upon DC. So by converse of BPT or by converse of basic proportionality theorem, we have AD is parallel to BC. So this is what we had to prove. Yes. Simple. So what we do? They have given two angle bisectors, and we use the angle bisector theorem in both the cases. And in one of the equation, replace AB by AC or AC by AB. In one, you have to replace, and. Once you replace it in one equation, you will observe that there is a common factor to both the equations, and thus leading to A E upon E B equal to A D upon D C. Once you arrive at it by converse of B P T, E D is parallel to B C. Hence proved. Okay, simple. So in all these sums, wherever you have doubts, just pause the video and go through the solution. Go through the question once again. Try to draw the diagram again. If if you have any doubts, please write in the comment section. I would love to help you out. Okay, so actually this was the last problem in practice at one point two. I'm done with this video. Um, okay, thank you for listening to me, guys. And please like the video, share it with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and also follow us on Instagram at uh, s underscore g underscore frento and. Please, please write your doubts in comment section. You can also ask your queries on uh, Insta page. We will post that as soon as possible. Okay, guys, take care. Bye, bye.